Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Clark with Thailand Unplugged, back with the latest news from Thailand and Southeast Asia. Let's have a quick look at what's coming up. A Thai MP gets bored in Parliament, so he decides to zoom in on a woman's breast, and the Thai media shares it with the rest of the world. 10,000 ducks released all at once in Thailand, quite a spectacular scene. Thailand's Health Minister and Deputy Prime Minister accept charity role with WHO Regional Committee. Major countries around the world are warning their citizens not to travel to China, or they could be detained in China for no reason. Once again, I'm Stephen Clark. Those and other stories coming right up from Southeast Asia. Thai MP zooms in and out on boobs in Parliament, thinking that the woman may have needed help. Thailand, a member of the ruling party today, fessed up to checking out some nudes in Parliament, but perhaps taking a lead from his colleague who previously claimed smuggling harem was just like a flower. The MP said he just thought the topless maiden needed help. Well, that's fair enough, but uh, what sort of help were you going to give? Caught red-handed by reporters zooming in and out on the image for at least 10 minutes. Shambri representative Ronathap Anawat said that he didn't know the girl, but she had sent him a plea for help, followed by a nude, of course, as he explained it. He was trying to assert her motive during yesterday's session. When it became clear she wanted money, he deleted all the pictures. Ranathorpe said the reason he was zooming in and out and in and out again was to observe the environment surrounding the girl in the picture to determine whether she was being harassed by some gangsters or forced to take this kind of picture or not. Come on Ranathorpe, you just got caught red-handed. Parliament can be so boring sometimes, can't it? Thousands of ducks let loose in Thai and rice paddies to clear out the bugs. Yes, 10,000 ducks let loose on a rice farm in Thailand to remove insects after a recent harvest. A drone video recorded on the farm in Nikwam province shows a khaki Campbell duck being released from their pens to stream into the flooded rice fields to remove insects, snails and other pests that could harm the plants during the off season. Farmers have said the ducks will be allowed to roam free for about five months to keep the rice paddies bug free and will then be rounded up to lay their eggs. Duck breeders said the arrangement is mutually beneficial for the rice farmers who keep their costs down and are able to get rid of the pests without harmful chemicals and the duck breeders who save money for food. And after this wonderful mutual arrangement with the happy little ducks, they are slaughtered and eaten. <laughs> Thai Health Minister accepts Chairman's role with World Health Organization or WHO if you like, Regional Committee. Thailand's Health Minister and Deputy PM Anutan Chan Virakon has been appointed Chair of the World Health Organization, a regional committee for South East Asia. The colourful and controversial minister made the announcement at a press conference. He said 14 countries put his name forward for the role, which has a fixed term of one year partly due to Thailand's success in controlling the Chinese coronavirus. The committee is due to hold its first meeting where members are expected to discuss the Chinese coronavirus situation in Southeast Asia and share tips and basic practice ideas. A Newton Chun Virakon says Southeast Asian nations are focused on the resumption of travel between their countries adding that improving the Chinese coronavirus situation across the region is critical in order to facilitate this. A Newton Chun Virakon is generally well liked by the Thai public, although the same cannot be said for the country's 
foreign population, many of whom were raw by what they saw as idiotic comments made by him in the early weeks of the Chinese coronavirus outbreak. A Newton Chan Virakon was handing out surgical masks for people to protect themselves against the Chinese coronavirus. Apparently some foreign tourists didn't take them, which led to this unusual outburst by his suggesting they should be kicked out of Thailand and they don't wash and refer to them as effing phalangs, terms used in Thailand for foreigners. Not the eff business, just the phalang. He also made comments on his Facebook page which he denied later on and then proceeded to hand out apologies. But unfortunately the damage had already been done. In the early days of the virus, this caused a lot of problems for foreigners in Thailand of prejudice and assaults against foreigners. The US follows Australian and United Kingdom issuing update travel warnings to citizens about travelling to China. The US government has issued sweeping new advisory warnings against travel to mainland China and Hong Kong, citing the risk of arbitrary detention and arbitrary enforcement of local laws. It follows similar warnings issued by the Australian and British governments advising citizens against travelling to the region. Several foreigners have been detained in recent months, including Australian journalist Chang Li. Amid growing diplomatic tensions between Beijing and other foreign governments, the US advisory warned that China imposes arbitrary detention and exit bans to compel cooperation with investigation, pressing family members to return to China from abroad, influencing civil disputes and gain bargaining leverage over foreign governments. US citizens may be subject to prolonged interrogation and extended detention without due process of law, the advisory said. But of course, foreigners in China also have an obligation to abide by Chinese laws. British authorities have also issued a similar warning to its citizens. Chinese authorities have under certain circumstances detained foreigners citing endangering national security, the British Foreign Office said in its latest advisory post on its website. China has decided to start kidnapping foreigners under the pretext of trumped up charges and start using them as bargaining tools. Chinese state media condemns raid on Chinese journalists in Australia. Shanghai, Chinese state media condemned raids on the homes of Chinese journalists working in Australia as relationships between the two major trading partners is strained. Chinese news services said on Saturday that the raids grossly violated the legitimate rights of Chinese media reporters stationed in Australia and caused serious damage to the physical and mental health of journalists and their families. Okay, two weeks ago they arrested a female Australian journalist and still have not given any reason for her arrest or why she was arrested. They also tried to arrest two other Australian journalists last week, grossly violating legitimate rights and interests of Australian media reporters stationed in China and causing serious damage to the physical and mental health of journalists and their families in Australia as well. Other media reports that action taken by the Australian authorities were utterly appalling and damage relations between the two countries. But they do forget to mention that the Chinese Communist Party did all this the week before to Australian citizens. At least the Australians give them back. You've still got Australians in Chinese prisons still locked up on trumped up charges and one facing the death penalty. The Chinese Communist Party state run the Global Times. The unreasonable act was utterly appalling it fully exposes the Cold War mentality and political prejudice of Australian Department of Officials. What they have done not only seriously harms the reputation 
and image of Chinese media, but also seriously interferes with the normal people-to-people -people exchange between China and Australia. Australian Trade Minister on Friday responded to the report saying that security agencies had acted in accordance with the law. News of the raids coincides with the exit of two Australian journalists from China. The pair returned home with help of consulate officials after China state security visited their residence in Beijing and Shanghai and questioned them. Fearing for their lives and being locked up in prison, they were protected by the Australian Embassy in China. They were guaranteed a free passage back to Australia as long as they had an interview with the Chinese Communist Party at the Australian Embassy under the condition that the Chinese government let them leave the country peacefully as they had done nothing wrong. Another Australian citizen, a Chinese television anchor woman, Shang Li, was detained by Chinese authorities in August. There has been no word from her at all or what she has been charged with. She has virtually been kidnapped by the Chinese Communist Party. She also has a family at home with two children. Chinese media, did you report that at all? grossly violated, legitimate rights, physical and mental health of journalists and their families, utterly appalling. Maybe you could use the same text, just, just replace China with Australia. Four hundred and ninety one ties from Europe, Australia fly back home to Thailand. Thai Airways International, in cooperation with Foreign Ministry, brought back 491 Thai nationals stranded in some European countries and Australia on September the 14th. Thais who had registered with Royal Thai Embassy in Copenhagen, London and Canberra and with the Consulate General in Sydney were eligible to take these special flights of nationals returning to Thailand from other countries. Six hundred litres of liquid meth from Thailand to Australia. The Australian Federal Police and the Australian Border Force reported two persons have been arrested for six hundred litres of liquid methamphetamine was sent into Australia from Thailand. The meth was hidden inside cans of coconut milk. Eighty-six boxes of coconut milk cans were sent into Australia by air freight consignment. The Australian Border Force officials inspected the goods that seemed suspicious. A sample was taken from one of the cans for a test that confirmed the liquid inside was in fact crystal methamphetamine. The Australian Federal Police were notified about the seizure. An investigation was started and two people were arrested connected to the delivery. A controlled delivery took place where a 20 year old man and a 29 year old woman picked up the delivery. They were arrested shortly after. The suspects have been charged with attempting to process commercial quantities of unlawful imports. The punishment for such a crime in Australia is a life imprisonment. Ultra conservatives demand Trump's pledge to stay out of Thai politics. Activists calling themselves the people of Thailand visited the US Embassy in Bangkok on Wednesday to demand assurances from President Donald Trump that this country would not meddle in Thai politics. The group who handed a letter to the Embassy staff, the activist thanked the US Embassy for announcing previously that it had not supported anti-government protests in Thailand. However, they demanded that Trump back up the embassy's position with a presidential statement. Last week, the embassy dismissed allegations in certain sections of the Thai media that the US was supporting anti-government protests. The allegations stem from photographs of a student leader, or what they call the Penguin, meeting then US Ambassador Glenn Davis in a visit to the embassy in 2016. The photograph was published on an English language website called the Land Destroyed Report, which poses as a news outlet to disseminate stories alleging US influence in Thailand. But most of these stories have been spread by the Chinese Communist Party. 
and China denounced Thai politicians for showing support for Hong Kong's activists involved in anti-government protests saying it could harm the relationship between the two countries. This came after a Hong Kong pro-democracy activist Joshua Wong posted a picture on social media with prominent Thai opposition politician Thanathorn. 